the preceding sections of this video, we had a look at soil selection, we had a look at sieving, we had a look at mixing. What I'm gonna do now is talk about the theory of hydroform block making. First factor we need to keep in mind is the material. The material we use need to be consistent in volume. When we load the material into a bucket, we need to level the bucket at the top. When we load the material into a wheelbarrow, we need to level the wheelbarrow at the top. If the volume of the material is inconsistent, it will adversely affect the amount of cement in your mixture. If the volume is more, it means there will be less cement in the mixture. This means a weaker quality in hydroform interlocking block. So consistency of material, very important. Next factor to keep in mind is cement. We need to use a good quality cement. Cement with a lower grading will yield a lower quality hydroform interlocking block. Hydroform recommends cement with a rating of 42.5 in OPC. When we add cement to the mixture, it's important to know that we need to add at least 8% cement. 8% cement will give us a hydroform interlocking block with a strength of 7 megapascal. How do we measure 8% cement? 8% cement is one bucket of cement to 12 buckets of soil. We express this as a ratio of 1 to 12. We can also use one bucket of cement and two 65-litre wheelbarrows of soil. Why can we do this? Because 12 buckets of soil will fill two wheelbarrows. It's important that we cure the blocks as well because we are working with cement and curing is inherent to the strength of the cement. The next factor we need to keep in mind is water. After we've got our soil and we've added our cement and mixed it, we need to add the correct amount of water. Too little water will heal a bad quality block. So we need to measure the amount of water. Because we work with soil, which already contains a certain amount of moisture in it, it is very difficult to say I need to use X amount of liters. So when we add the water to the mixture and we've mixed it, there's a simple test called the drop test, which we will perform in order to test the water. With the drop test, you will take a handful of soil, form it into a ball and drop it from waist height. When it falls on the floor and it shatters into many pieces, you will know that the water content is too little. If it falls into one lump, you will know that the water content is too much. Ideally, when your ball of soil drops, it needs to break into four to five pieces. That will indicate good water content. There's a more accurate way of doing it as well, and that is manufacturing a hydroform interlocking test block. After you've done your mixture, you will take a soil sample, manufacture a block, and then measure the block. Make note of this measurement, add more water to your mixture, manufacture another test block. If you measure this block, you will see that the block is shorter than the one you have manufactured previously. You will continue with this process, constantly measuring the block. But note that at a stage, the block will have cracks at the bottom. As soon as the cracks appear, you know that you've got too much water in your mixture. You need to use the amount of water just before the cracks actually happened. When measuring your hydroform interlocking block, you ideally would like to measure between 225 to 230 millimeters. If you manufacture a hydroform block that's longer than that, measuring between 235 to 240 millimeters, you will have a bad quality block. The block might look very nice, but the water content in the block is too low for the cement to hydrate properly, resulting in a bad quality hydroform block. Do not produce long hydroform blocks. It's very important that you phone hydroform or contact hydroform 
and schedule a two-week training course in South Africa. During this course, all of this content will be handled with you and we will show you exactly how to manufacture an excellent quality hydroform interlocking block.